Hello students, uh, <coughs> welcome to computer's online class. I think ma'am is doing data representation. I think it's going very well. I think you have understood the number system very simple and not difficult. Anyhow, let us start with the chapter, first chapter, which is called Fundamentals of Computers. I think already you know about computers, what is computers and the applications of computers, some definition of computers, and also something like hardware, software, you have come across in last academics. Uh, let me tell something about uh, what is a computer environment, how computers works, what are the different components uh, involved in computers. So normally when you think of computer means, there are four major parts of computers. The first one is very important, it's called hardware. So this above this hardware, <coughs> hardware we have a software. So this software makes this hardware to function. With the help of hardware, the software can perform number of operations. That's a instruction according to the instruction given to it, it can perform. So there are circuits, we'll be learning all these things. So yeah, we have a hardware, we have a software. So about this, we have a data. Because these two are of no use if you do not provide data. And these three things are of no use when nobody is using it. So therefore, user. At the topmost, we have a computer like users. Then we have our data. And also we have a software, set of softwares. And we're using hardware. So all has to work as a one unit in order to perform any operation required by the user. So normally what happens, the user gives the data and instruction. And this, these data and instructions are interpreted by the system softwares and machines, that is we have a hardware part that will be performing the calculation. Again, the result will be transferred back to the user. So this is what a typical computer environment. So whenever we think of computer means, maybe many places we have seen computers. So this is just an introduction to a computers components. So now in this chapter, so we are going to learn about uh, the different components. That is, we try to understand the components of computers. What are the components like hardware? We learn different types of hardware available and also learn the software we learn. And also, very interestingly, we learn the history of computers. So history of computer means like evolution of computers. We have a human evolution. In similar way, we have a computer evolution also. So normally what happens, the earlier computers are uh, just a calculating device. They are used for the calculation purpose only. But as the time goes, no, they are very big. We learn all those things. They are very big. They are consuming more power. And later on, they are reduced. And we have a compact, you have seen, like palm top, like your mobile. So they are also computer technology. So what happens? This evolution. So what are the uh, drastic changes we have seen that we are going to discuss starting from Abacus, today's uh, supercomputers. We'll be learning about the evolution. So that is something history of the computers. But also we are learning generation of computers. So the earlier generations, we use a different, depending on the components we used and also the size of the computer and also the input output device like programming languages. So based on this also, we have a different types of uh, generations. Like we have first generations where we use hardware as in vacuum tubes, then we use a second generation transistors, then we use a high C's integrated circuit. And in fourth generation, we have large scale integration. Now we are using very large scale integration. So this is the components. And also we have seen programming languages. Earlier we had a low level language, then we had a assembly level language. And also now we use a English like language, high level language. So that is how the different generations are classified. We learn all generations and their advantages and how what are the things are introduced in each of generations and what are the advantages over the previous generations. So what is the present generation that also we'll discuss in this chapter. So let us get into some you know definition. So what is a computer means? There are many ways of defining, you know, some of you can define, I think most of you do. Because early, as I told, computers are early used for only the calculations purpose only. Now the computers are no more uh, uh, for calculation purpose, but we use computer for a number of applications other than calculation. 
So whether it's addition making, whether it's a comparison, maybe you have seen almost all digital means, wherever digital comes, there is a computer technology we are using. So therefore it's process for many, but internally it does the uh, simple calculation mathematics only, but we have seen there are many applications where computers are being used. It is not the only uh, calculation we think, but using that calculation only it can perform number of op operations. That's why we can see the computers in many applications. The area of application is not restricted. So whenever we say it's everything is digitalized to so every place, every walk of life, every of fields of life where we are using computers. So the list is endless. Therefore, you can define what is computer means. So we can define it's a computer as a universal information manipulator. That's one uh, general definition you can because any any information digital you you give and this can process and produce information provided you have a mathematical step that is an instruction or it, uh, programs. So if you come up with the develop the software. So any, any type of problem can be solved using computers. That's why it's called universal information manipulator. And when you think of technically what is computer means, so it's a, a combination of electrical and electronic components put together to perform any operation required by the user. You might have seen computers consisting of any electrical and electronic component. There are some electrical and there are some electronic components. So th they have to work as a single unit in order to perform any operation required by the system. That's more technically we can define. Uh, there are many other definitions. Computers uh, accept one or more data and according to the instruction it performs the operation on that data and produces output. There are many ways of defining. It also stores data and instruction according to the instruction. It processes the data again the final result is obtained that is also displayed. So this is also we can define. There are many ways of defining it. According to the requirement, according to usage, I may define the computers in different way. But technically when you talk of computer means, it's a electrical and electronic component put together to perform the any operation required by the user. So let us learn some application. So where and all we use computers already I have told. So what is this computers where and all we use. So now we can see computers are invented to be uh, mankind in the field of calculations earlier as I told. <coughs> but the versatility of present day computers are giving rise to the modern society in the field of information and technology you might have seen. But when it's invented, so just a, uh, just a tool for uh, the calculation purpose. But now today's versatility, today's it covers all the area, all walks of life and giving that sort of information technology we are using nowadays. Let us be learn understanding what is actually the concept is. So computers are changing the way the area of communication, the first how the computer communication, earlier communication was taking place and today. So and also transport uh, and then trafficking and the industries we are using computers, government we are using computers, educational field that's one we are studying now and also in medicine fields, uh, scientific research, law, social service and even arts like uh, music, movies, paintings, games or any field which involves data and information. So there we use the computers. That's why now you, everything is digitalized. So you go to the government, now you want to take RTC means it just it's a computerized. Just you enter your uh, details automatically you'll get the printout. Earlier it was a tedious task like government or maybe trafficking. No, traffic is controlled by digital signals. You might have seen you are walking and there is a traffic signals and automatically you have noticed every 180 seconds there will be sometimes it's 90 seconds. So automatically it's a microprocessor it keeps changing and also communication. So computer becomes one of the uh, easiest way of communicating. Though so maybe you are making video call and you are charting on like online classes what we are doing this also for communication and also you use for transport some places many places we use computers in background so they'll be helping for the transport of data like information sometimes like postal service we are using now we can use this computers technology like email can send and receive and industries many industries they use for like CAD computer aided design and also we use a CAM computer aided manufacturer and education field definitely we are using computers for teaching and also they are using like the courses which you are studying and also they are used in a medicine field. So medicine field means you might have seen many 
like scanning and also whatever today's you know, laparoscopic surgeries and all our, we have our machines that is we use the computers so they are assisting the doctors to do some you know, surgeries there are many places that's medicine field also we use computers scientific research like space research or many any, <coughs> any research you are conducting so there is a background we have a computer technology without computer technology we are not able to now nowadays this a law even courts and also the data has been computerized all details will be in front of the system you know in front of the judge immediately when you type the uh, you know case name or whatever so that's also now it's available and or it's available online as well so look, the court can be seen you know how it is happening what are the cases which has been some court and can be easily available to all when it is networked so that's how it works a social service also can do use the computers and even now this music i think computerized music uh, compositions uh, we are using and we have seen in the big budget movies as uh, special effects so we use computers and paintings can also be done using computers and gaming i think more familiar which is very important for you people i think you remembering pubg is also gaming so this is one which you are very familiar with i think so this is the one gaming part you like you enjoy computers more than other things so and then also we have a, a data and information so any anything which has a data and it has to be processed that data should be in the digital form and you want that into some other form like information there we use computers that is where we use that's that's what the computers can do it takes data any data that should be in digital form and it can process according to the instruction and it will be producing the information remember computers cannot do any task by itself so everything has to be done and the user has to give the instruction and also you have to provide the data only thing is the computers can perform according to the instructions given by the user that is one limitation of computers so computers becoming you know in many communication you know communication like meetings the desires of communication and exploration of information the distance of the world is sinking with the utilization of computers with the help of email chatting online banking booking tickets audio video etc so all these things already i have told so it becoming a bondage of reality in meeting the desires of communication so if they are telling about how effectively this will be used for uh, communication how we can you know use it uh, communication how will we can perform you know, anything which is we wanted for ca- like a communication part like you can the distance of the world is sinking with the utilization of computers with the help of email you know even in us in a fraction of seconds the data mail will be sent and chatting you can make video chatting online chatting so all the on, like now bank no need to go to the bank so maybe bank at different places now it is core banking any banking anywhere you can do like using mobile you can do online banking this are all because of computer technology booking tickets like air ticket your booking train tickets could also be done so like any audio video you want to listen music immediately it's available you want to watch movie is available all this is because of the computer's technology we are using that's how it is working that's why it is not um, restricted computer application is only this field so apart from this if you have ability or you have innovative idea of where can i use computers with the uh, instructions and providing data the computers can perform those tasks as well let us we come to the the use of the computer literates so we are, this is the most important people are asking many people you know so what is this uh, computer literates what is there we don't we are not getting any job you know people i said we don't want to take computer science you know, there is you know what is what is the computer literates so in the modern society the f- career of the field of a uh, career opportunities that's very important so uh, is workforce and then we have a uh, the professionals can attain a greater opportunity or thing so you will get plenty of opportunity for with the help of computers so if you are the computer literates or well placed in the modern society in the field of career opportunities workforce the professional can attain a greater opportunity with the help of computers that's what i'm saying so if you are computer literates means you may be getting the well placed jobs you are get higher jobs maybe you no know, you think uh, whenever we do computer tech you know about computer technology means then you obviously you have a, a better option so when you go to some like you did also somebody did mba and also you did mba you you completed be in computer science and then when you are you know recruit for the job 
you get you are given higher higher priority than the same degree, no problem. But you know, but would you have a computers at the you know bachelor's like be in computer science and then we have a MBA. Someone is comes with the uh, BBA and MBA and definitely you are going to be having a higher options of selection. So that's why. With the help of computers, we can do anything. So we do research and come up. Now, now robotics is going on. Artificial intelligence, uh, I might have seen. You know, you've seen the now automatic driving cars are there available. So anyway, any place, it's, it's, it's your ability to think and apply the techniques. And you can, could be the one of the technocore tomorrow. Then also you can bring your own technology. And that's what, so with the help of computers, you can attain any, any stage of... You know, but you need to learn about, you want to understand computers, how it functions, how it works. The quite boring, this is, don't take it as a boring concept, but it's, it's a reality. This is what really it's happening. But you should be able to, you know, open up, you should think of these possibilities, you know, rather than asking other people, this is the only, I want to be doctors, I want to be something like, you know, people are restricted, I, I do BSc, AG. I'm not saying those are the field where you do not shine because possibilities the next to future is a technology based. You, even you do BSc, AG, you may be in a computer someplace. Sometimes you, you are necessity of using computers. So that's why I'm telling computer technology is never going to be, you know, fading. So therefore I'm saying, so learn the computer technology definitely is going to it provides a wide variety of opportunities in the future. Anyhow, let's don't worry, uh, whatever you think, the last class also I told, computer technology, definitely you will be well placed in the future, provided you have a sufficient knowledge, minimum basic knowledge at least, then you will get the good job as well. So let us learn about the, this chapter, so how the computers, uh, uh, the components of computers already have told, hardware, software, we learn the components how typical organization of computers that we are going to learn this. So there is a definite definition of uh, defining uh, computers. So can there is a uh, way of defining. So computer is an automatic electronic machine that can store, recall, and process data. But someone can say, according to you, say, what is computer? You, what you understood means it's electronic machine that can store and recall and process data automatically. That's also we can define. That's, that's a definition for you. So or you can define computers or electronic machines that can perform tasks or complex calculation according to the set of instruction or programs given to it. That also a definition. That's why I said there is no single definition where you are going to define computer as a, like one definition. According to the usage, according to the requirements, I may define in different way. You know, if someone says it's an automatic electronic machine, yes, that can store, yes, it will store. It does the recalculation? Yes, it collect, recollect, and process the data, and again store back to the computers. Uh, that's that's also a machine that can do all this automatically. And computers is an electronic machine that can perform any task, a simple task or complex calculation. How it is never do by itself according to the set of instruction. That's we call as a programs. I think you are all familiar. So that can, therefore, in general, I said non-technically, you can say computer is a universal information manipulator. Or you can say it's an electrical and electronic component put together to perform any operation required by the user. That's how also you can define. Let us learn what you can do with computers. What we can do with the computer means any task. You take data, anything like provide as a data and also provide input as an instruction. So according to the data and instruction, it can pro process and produce the information according to the requirements. So this is like what you are doing in real life and it can be imitated. So these are the, what are computers in other way you can define. Computers are the machines are used to imitate human actions. So your driving means computers can be used for driving. Your teaching means computer could also be used for like robots. Now, nowadays you can use. So that is what uh, the imitation, so human imitation. You are doing some calculations. Yes, computer, you can replace. And you know, a bank manager means you can, what manager is doing, just imitate by machines. Provided you should give the instructions how to imitate. That is what all about this computer. So what you can do is they have given simple example how they wear and all this this the typical need not be only this much so there are plenty of this. What you can do with computers so in workplace they have decided two places. So in workplace what you can do many people use computers to keep records yes to keep all the data uh, in the computers we use and also sometimes they use to analyze data. So if you want to make analysis so you want to do some processing and you have to come up with some result means they are also analyze data. So to analyze data also use computers. 
and to do research sometimes, yes, you can use computers and manage products which are currently being executed. So there are many. So keep records, one, analyze data to do research and ma manage products as a workplace. In workplace, what we can do means we keep records of all the employees who may be working. Sometimes you analyze how many product has been, what is the designs or something like, what is the past 10 years, past year, what we need, something like analysis of data. And you can do research if necessary, you can also can go for research and also manage the number of recurrent projects which are going on, something like this. At home, this is you can think you have a computer, so at home, what you can do with your computer means, so find information. Sometimes we use computers like Google, we'll try to find some information. And most commonly used is store pictures like Facebook, Instagram, so you may be using. So there we store pictures in your computers and sometimes we store music, this also you are very familiar. And also track finance finances, this is uh, very less people will be using. And play games, this is uh, your topic of interest, that is uh, play games. So definitely we use computers to play games, most of you, which is very important, I think. Um, according to you, this is where we use computers. What is a computer means? We have used to play games. And communicate with others, like chatting, video chatting online, today what I am doing, communicating with the computers, this is a communication. This also we have used quite a certain extent, So, but playing games with a, what you can do with this. And just a few possibility, a computers are used essentially as a data processor. So normally what I said, so a computer can be defined as a, a data processor, generally computer can process the data. Any type of data, so whether it's related to the workplace or whether it's related to you know, individual at home, you are using computers, it can process data what you've given to the computers. Let us learn something. Um, how does computer work? I think if you ask how does you work means because you have a brain, a brain and according to the uh, what you have learned from the past 17 or 18 years and according to what is the things we have stored, depending on the situation, you will be reacting. Like if you, the newborn child cannot speak, cannot talk, cannot, you know, but as the time goes, uh, the, it can perform, but it stores all the things. Yes, this is right, this is wrong, this should I, should do, I should not do these things. That's how, you know, it is storing and also we feed. This is this is the way to do it, this is not the way to do all those things. There is some technique. So normally let us, the same way, because it's, I told already, they do not think computer science is different than human life. So almost similar, but that has to be done with the machines. This is what is happening in real life, just replacing humans by machines. That's why there's a close relation. That's why I want to establish that relation from the beginning itself. That's why I'm asking you to think parallelly. So machines means like humans only, it will work in, not exactly like humans, but the concept, idea of how we do the same thing we are going to do because it is replacing us. That's why, that's what I'm saying. So. Think parallelly, machines and humans. So let us think, how does the computer work? Let us, we take with an example, like they give an example of how your mother is uh, preparing the tea. When your mother is <coughs> asking you to prepare tea, For example, like how you do it. There is some procedure, there is some data you needed. The ingredients required maybe uh, three by four cup of water, correct? And also we need half teaspoon of tea leaves, uh, powder, you can tea powder and also we have a teaspoon of sugar and half cup of milk. So these are the data, these are the needed if you think parallelly. So this is how we are going to prepare tea, that is we need, what are the, what are the things we needed to prepare tea means? We need water, we need uh, tea, tea, tea leaves, uh, we, uh, then we need sugar, of course we need milk. So having this it will be done automatically? No, there is a definite procedure, steps to be followed, we have to follow certain step. Preparing the tea, it involves the process like boiling of water and then boiling water or milk. Some different people use different and adding tea leaves and then sugar and milk. Finally, you have prepared tea. So this is how our human being, you know, normally we prepare something. Similar way computers could also be to accomplish this task, what we did means, so we took input. Now our brain accepts you want to do this means, so these are the data we needed. So preparation of tea requires these things. And I have to follow these instructions, procedures, technique. And finally, I got the tea, prepared tea. I think what I explained, this is in the, ta in the form of table they have written. They have used the, the, the words input and process 
this also instructions, actual process how you do. This is the result, outcome of your preparation. So this is how we do, the, how we perform operations means there is an input. I take it as your brain, so it accept uh, how, what to do now. So we have to provide the data and this is a data. How you do means there is an instructions, so process. How you do means that is called, there is some technique, there is some steps, procedures, one by one we have to follow then you will get the result. So that is exactly the same way computers can perform. Computer accept one or more da you know, data and instructions. According to the instruction, process on this data and produce output. So that is what computer means. So we can define computer now. So what is the computer means? Computer is electronic device which accept one or more data as an input and also the instruction. According to the instruction, it performs the operation on the data and produce the result. So that is also you can define. So indirectly, whenever we talk in of computers means we should should know the way the input has to be provided and also you should know the instruction how it has to be processed and finally we'll get the result. That is in order to get the output from the input we should process that's the instructions and also everything has to be provided by the user only. Computer can just only to represent store and recall and perform the operation given by the user only. It never performs any operation by itself. If you give 10 and 20, computer will never calculate uh, some 30. 10 plus 20 is 30, something it will not calculate. Unless until you give the instruction, then it performs. Maybe even, even if I say 10 and 20, will you answer anything? No. So if I ask, find the sum of 10 and 10, 20 example. If I ask, then your brain thinks, so now I have to make the calculation. Then you have brain procedure how to add these two. So then you will add, then you will announce the result. The same way, so we have to provide data and also we have to provide the instruction along, according to the instruction, it process on the data and produce the output. Let us learn some characteristics of computers. You can think like a, a slight uh, a comparison between a human and also like machines. It is not exactly, but still you can think uh, just the characteristics. Well, how we'll be identifying some features, some characteristics are there. How how do you identify means it it possesses some certain things like speed, memory, and also we have a we learn one by one. So speed, memory, we have a storage camera, both are same, and also we have a accuracy, and also we have a versatility, automation, diligence, cost effectiveness. We, these are all the features or characteristics of computers. Let us learn about what is the speed. I think we know computers can perform any task in a fractions of seconds, not in a seconds and also in the milliseconds, not in a, you know, the computer depending on the processor, central processing unit, so CPU, that's just a processor, you can call like microprocessor, depending on, you know, what now we have a i10 uh, processor, i7 uh, processor which can perform, you know, much faster. That is, it, the, the time taken for processing instruction is very less, so then it will be in the in the form of uh, you know, picoseconds. Uh, therefore, we have a, so the results which we are going to process will be in terms of picoseconds. Uh, so in earlier we had a, like a millions milliseconds, microseconds. Now we have a picosecond. It's a ten power minus twelve. That's a, such a, a small iota of time for which it will be processed and returns the result. And a powerful computer is capable of adding together 18 digit number in a 300 to 400 nanoseconds. In a, such a small amount of time, you can have 18 digits number, you can think 2 18 digit number, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, add these two number. How much? You know, th that will be done in less than millisecond. So even non-numerical environments, not only numbers it can do, it even for like strings, characters, other other than non-numerical environment, like indexing of the complete student's name in the college, will consume less time with the help of computers. You, know, you want to know alphabetical order, very in a fraction of seconds you'll get all the students. If you have a thousand students, within a fraction of seconds you will get it all there according to the uh, sum order indexing. You want to index according to the you know, register number and you want alphabetical order, all this can be done in a fraction of second. That's why the ability to get the answer fast enough so that as time taken, it has, one has to normally compare to 
uh, other media of uh, calculation, the computers are much high speed. That's a calculating much faster, fast enough so that one has one has the time to take an action. No, no, that's uh, no, that's a, such a fast one. It takes a, uh, that's what. So electrical pulses travels at incredible speed. Why it works at such a faster means because it involves electrical and electronic components. Because the computer is an electronic machine, its internal speed is virtually instantaneous. Immediately we'll do it. So that's what I said. So we do not uh, talk in terms of seconds, even millisecond. Our uh, units of speed are uh, microsecond, uh, milliseconds, the seconds, and rarely even the picoseconds. That's what uh, we are uh, explained about. This is one of the uh, important feature of uh, uh, what we call uh, computers is uh, speed. The speed is one of the important characteristics because of that only we have a, uh, what we call the characteristic. That's why computers are so popular today. And computers um, has a memory. So what does this memory means? Computer can store like our brain stores so many things in uh, So memory, so I think already we know that our uh, brain has a memory where we can store, we recognize many people and we can perform many tasks. You know, we can, that's because uh, there is a most important thing is our brain. So brain works like storage units and computer. And in similar way, computer has got also storage unit. Like we have uh, two things. One, we have a, a RAM, that's a primary memory. Other, we have a secondary memory. So what is this prim primary memory is like you think like, there are certain things which we keep in our brain only and so it's not exactly similar but other things we keep it in some other you know, papers on the text we write it on something else but brain keeps only those things which are very essential and which is not needed that will be forgotten that will be thrown out so that will be stored in a, some other media like we use the papers we use the notebooks uh, some other where we will get printouts and we store permanently physical media so that's like secondary memories exactly the same way like as human acquires a new knowledge, the brain subconsciously selects what it feels to be important and worth retaining in its memory and relegates unimportant details to the back to the back of the mind or just forgets them. So just what is it's important is like similarly in the computers, the primary memory, which is called as a RAM, retains only essential, which is currently being executed, which is needed, which is very important, those things will be kept in the RAM. And what is unwanted things is, is not stored. So they are used to store data temporarily. That's why as long as the computer is executing some instruction, so then the data and instructions should be kept in the RAM. So normally RAM size is very less. So therefore, we do not store everything. So that's something like primary memory, like our brain. You think like a textbooks is a secondary story, secondary. So in brain, we, we store only what is essential. We do not keep everything. At the time, what we needed, we store, we use in the brain. And remaining will be in the textbooks or some other media, physical media. And they are stored te temporarily as long as is required. Once it is usage is over, we just, we forget, we delete, we do not use it. And one more, this, then the memory only, it has a storage capacity. It can store data or instruction or information permanently. So the after processing the data, the information must be stored in the secondary storage. That's the secondary. So whenever we talk about secondary means they are permanent. They will never lost. So so that the data or information can be used later. The data and information can be stored permanently in a secondary storage or auxiliary storage device. So that's what I said. Permanent. They are permanent form of storing. The computer memory is measured in terms of byte. It is called bits, binary digits. It is or a group of eight bits or called byte. So now the, the computer memory is measured using GB. Nowadays it is available in terabytes. And so earlier we had 500 GB gigabytes. Now we have a terabytes. And one more important features of uh, computer is the accuracy. The computers can perform the according to the instruction accurately with a high rate of consistency. 
So the computer generated results are exact and without any mistake with the high rate of consistency. Already I have told any number of digits you give accuracy and you give uh, it gives the exact result without any mistakes. And remember this is according to the instruction. It never, it is not accurate by itself. What instruction you give, that instruction is correct, it gives the correct result. Otherwise, if you give for a sum, you use a minus means, it does the subtraction only. So, it, it has no of intelligence of its own. But what instruction you are given, that according to that instruction, it the rate of accuracy is very high compared to humans. They are fast, accurate, they have storage capacity. These are the characteristics. And also like memory, it has a... And next one is versatility. So versatility means like humans can perform many tasks. You have a person means like you have a doctor means you only do, do the patient. You know, other than this, you can you can drive. You know, you can do art, in painting. You can sing. You can you, know, you can be a you know, singer. You can be you know, driver. Sometimes you can be a good chef also. So that's why versatility humans are. Similarly, computers seem capable of performing almost any task. So we have an instruction procedure how to do it like that's also you can learn in real life the same way computers capable of provide data and instruction automatically it does it can perform any task computers seem capable of performing any task provided provided that the task can be reduced to a series of logical steps that is what is important is a logical step means if you come up with the mathematical uh, steps or instruction that is what we call algorithms or uh, program set of instructions. If we come up with the instructions and computers can do any task, whatever you want it can do. You want to do a magic, yes it will do, but you have to give the instruction how to do this. That's what just imitating, replacing humans means, yes what are the things you can do, the computers could also be performed more accurately, the speed, accuracy and also storage capacity and it's a versatility. Any task can be done, that's also one of the advantages of computer or characteristics of computer. Next we have uh, automation. Automation means automatically once you give the data and instruction it takes the instruction and execute one by one automatically and when they encounter the last instruction stop it stops. It's a simple automatic so this computer is automation. So the, the computer is a much more than the adding machine as earlier later it's not, earlier it was used for just addition calculator. Now uh, it requires uh, calculator or check inner output system all of which requires the human operators to press the necessary keys for the operation to be performed. Once program is in the computer's memory, once we provide a data and instruction that is in the computer memory, the individual instructions are transferred one after the other from to the control unit for execution. The processor follows this instruction until it meets the last instruction which, which has a stop program execution. So, till that it does automatically calculation. That is what I am saying. So, automation means you have to provide. Initially, we have to provide data and instructions. We have to input keying. So, data and it has to transfer to the computer memory. Once it goes to the computer memory, from the memory it goes to the control unit. So, control unit controls and coordinate that executes the instruction. And these instructions will be executed one by one until the processor finds the instruction to stop. So, that is where the program is and that is how the automation. Computer can perform any task automatically according to the instruction given to it. So, that is one of the advantages, characteristics of computer. Delegance, this is one of the most important compared to humans. So, normally what happens, uh, being a machine, computer does not suffer from human traits of tiredness. That's what uh, lack of concentration. Uh, no, these computers will never get tired. They never get, you know, they never take a... Uh, uh, sick leaves, leaves sometimes you know, they, once the data and instruction is identified and they keep repeating any number of times any number without any mistake exactly uh, the, because when we do perform some task we do you know very accurately for some set of numbers as we do repetitive task again and again so human uh, efficiency goes down so normally that's that's we'll get bored so we do not want then the morning when you come and work and when you evening you they look at the difference. Can perform more accurately in the morning as the evening we were not able to do more efficiently. That is that is not the case. You give any number of data on instruction, it never get tired, it never 
make mistakes it, according to the instruction it does the calculation if that's what they give example if 3 million calculation have been performed and it will perform the 300 million with exactly the same accuracy and speed as it did for the first directly this other thing the basics uh, had to think the computers never get tired you now you are doing because they are machines that's all that's a being emissions but human definitely we are not able to do it when we do first instruction uh, first calculation from early in the morning 9 o'clock and the same thing you are doing at 3 o'clock may be different it's not the same we become uh, tired we become get bored of doing the same task again and again but machines never get tired never get bored that's advantage and one most is the cost effectiveness the, the initial value of the you know cost is even though very high as it is reduces the paper work and also human efforts thereby reducing the cost but initially the investment is big normally 40 50000 you have to invest but as the goes time goes it eliminates the use of paper so the amount of paper is and also human efforts is reduced now it's make comfortable much faster no mistakes possibly and instead of three people so you can have only one computer that can perform all these three people thereby reducing the salary we no no need to pay the monthly salary by having only one but initial investment i as the time goes the cost is reduced to larger extent that is something about the cost effective so what are the characteristics of computer means the first one we have a speed then we have a memory storage but same accuracy and then versatility automation diligence and cost effective sometimes they may be asked for the exams so mention the feature or characteristics of computers and these are things we have to mention or sometimes they ask explain so we can explain you know, read textbook uh, uh, rather than preparing then what we can prepare the same thing is in notes that for i personally ask you to write notes by reading these things only make the copy of this and write so when you are writing like like exams you write first you read and explain or try to write by yourself without seeing that's enough you are prepared for the exams and also no note as uh, notes also prepared that's the best method now we can do it so data and information so whenever we talk about computers we talk about data and information so what is data means so it's a raw fact it's a collection of unprocessed uh, which which can which can include a text numbers image audio video anything in digital form which has needs to be processed which is like a raw material which can be processed to produce the meaningful information we can define data is a collection of raw facts or maybe it's a numbers or maybe statistics which can be processed to produce information that is what we called as data you can see data is a collection of unprocessed items which can include any digital like it may be a text or it may be a numbers or it may be ima- images or it may be audio or it may be video we can also define this is the more specifically they have mentioned it's a general it's a raw fact it may be figures sometimes not only just facts it can be a figures or it can be statistics any digital data which requires to be processed for example you can take there are two things one is called like param another is 16 does that have any meaning no it's a fact param yes true 16 is a number correct statistics figure there is no there represents data so when i process this the name of student is param and his age is 16 so now look at the understood what is uh, data and what is information so now let us learn something about uh, the computers work through interaction between the hardware and the software already have told there is a hardware there is a software the machine parts of physical what are hardware means the physical what are the physical components of computers which you can feel you can touch they are called computer hardware so the computer programs that tell the computer what to do how to do etc that's a instruction set of instructions and these set of instructions are called programs that programs collection of programs we call as a software using the software computer can perform any task so that is called as a software we have basically two things one is a hardware and there is a software hardware is any physical devices refers to the part of the computer that you can see and touch physical components including whatever you see inside and outside the case everything is you know they are this helps in the performing the calculations for the user so hardware includes like monitor is hardware keyboard is hardware mouse is hardware printer is hardware and also we have a ram is a hardware 
hard disk is a hardware inside motherboard is a hardware like there are bus we use there's also there are many things registers control unit there are many things chipset a processor is all hardware and then we have a software so this is an example so these are all called hardware so common computer hardware components includes most of the computers we have our keyboard very important we have a mouse this optional microphone scanner is depending on the requirement webcam also nowadays it's very important and printer of course we use monitor most commonly used speakers of course now commonly we use and system unit hard disk this is all there uh, external hard disk if you needed additional we use uh, optical like pen drive usb all those things uh, this will be part of the system modem also we are using now online internet connections we use a modem memory cards we sometimes we use uh, pen drive is you are using memory card is less they are used with the digital cameras or something like some other places Mem memory card for mobile the software means uh, software refers to the instructions or program it's a collection of program that tell the hardware what to do so using this software the hardware can perform its task indirectly software provides data and instruction and with the help of this the hardware can perform it task let's it's like just add or subtract or this adds bits in the form of zeros and ones subtraction that's using that it does the calculation again it will be convert system normally software will be classified into two types one is called system software other is application software as i its name suggests system software these are the software which are used to manage the system itself so whenever we switch on the system you have seen automatically computer get done everything how means this is because of the system software system software can perform this task automatically without human intervention that's what like operating system uh, translators we have there are many things we'll be learning is you know translators we have assembler uh, interpreter compiler we'll be learning and we have operating system then we have a, we'll learn system software concept one chapter is there there we are going to learn application software is like the application according to the requirements you may develop your own software like we use a banking system there is a different software like in a in music industry they use a different softwares and also movies they use a different softwares so they are, they are used to assist them in personal task so consider of design to make you more productive or we learn about those things in the next class so next is a functional components of computer or the different components of computer so whenever you see the i think you know the the diagram so typical uh, the input unit we have a output unit there we have a cpu there we have a control unit arithmetic logical unit and then we have a storage memory unit there are two things primary memory secondary memory so we'll continue this about this things in the next class i hope uh, you have understood just introduction i don't want to take too much things this is a theoretical concept uh, let us we go slowly let us see if he reopens the class we'll start better way than this okay uh, no problem we will follow according to the instruction we'll see in the next class